Let me know when. Right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. My name is Hilda Gonzalez, and thank you for attending today's virtual workshop. Since 1975, all People's Resource Center services are provided at no charge to our clients who live in the DuPage County. Check our website, www.peoplesrc.org. Next slide, please. Perfect. One moment. Sorry about that. There we go. Guidelines for our virtual workshop. Please mute your line for better sound quality. To unmute yourself and begin talking, click the unmute button in the bottom left-hand corner of the meeting window. You can also press the space bar to unmute yourself. If you're having any technical difficulties, send Matt a uh, question and maybe he can talk to you on the side, okay? Feel free to turn on your video. We want to see you. And we would love to see you and as well as ask questions along the way if you have any concerns. We'll try to address them as we go along. Otherwise, we'll answer all questions at the end of the presentation. And please use the chat function to type your questions too. And uh, Matt will be monitoring those uh, questions. And if possible, we'll, we'll be addressing all your questions as we go along. Next slide. Conflict management in the workplace. Next. What is conflict? Disagreement or argument between two or more parties. Struggle over values, status, power, or resources. Differences in goals, values, interests, or personalities. Simply put, it's where meeting the needs of one party is incompatible with meeting the needs of another. Next. But remember, conflict is inevitable. Nobody's perfect. Conflict is going to happen. Conflict resolution and conflict management are not the same thing. We can't resolve all conflict, but we can learn to manage it. Interpersonal and organizational conflicts both occur in the workplace and also at home. <laughs> Negative aspects of conflict. No results, minimal shared problem solving, stifles creativity, destroys relationships, no sense of we, someone wins, someone loses. Unwillingness to work together increases stress and decreases productivity, lowers morale and increases turnover, declining sense of team, declining leadership, loss of self-esteem. Next, positive aspects of conflict improves problem solving. This is very good when you actually go for interviews. This is one of the main questions. They want to know how you how good you resolve a problem. Enhances long-term relationships, stimulates creativity and produces new ideas. Teaches flexibility, allows for personal and professional growth. Sometimes in our resumes, we say that we are flexible. This is what we know about handling or managing conflict, being flexible, and also allowing for personal and professional growth. The more you learn to resolve conflict, the more growth you have in your professional life. Increases participatory involvement and encourages communication. The more you participate, the better you become at it. Teaches us to listen. This is a big one for most of us. <laughs> we like to talk more than we listen. Spotlights or promotes leadership. If you want to be a leader, you need to know how to manage conflict strengthens the organization and the team. It makes your group, your company grow and it makes it stronger because everybody works at the same pace and they agree with the initiatives of the company. Next, types of conflict, information, relationship, value, structural, and interest. Information, sometimes you may not receive enough information on how to handle things, and everybody has a different point of view. Relationship. This is where the relationships start to break down because people are not on the same page. Value. What is your value system? It depends on your uh, background experiences, your own where you grew, place where you grew up, and then structural. 
do you follow structures or do you want to make your own? And interest, are they meeting your interest or are they coming up with things that you don't care about? So remember those things, types of conflict. Next, information conflicts caused by people having different or insufficient information, differing views on what is relevant, different interpretation of information. Next, relationship conflicts caused by strong emotions. Oh, this is a big one, <laughs> misconceptions and poor communication. Uh, strong emotions can get the best of you and you shut down to anybody's input. You just wanna do things your way and that's not healthy. Misconceptions, you, mess, you might misinterpret other people's um, comments or emotions. And the best thing to do is to listen and leave the emotion out of the uh, conflict. Poor communication. Make sure you use positive words and don't point the finger at anybody. <laughs> Next, value conflicts caused by perceived or actual incompatible belief systems, imposing one's values on others, claiming exclusive rights to a set of values. Next, structural conflicts caused by unequal power or authority limited resources or opportunity, geographical, physical, or environmental factors that hinders cooperation. Next. Interest conflicts caused by competition over perceived or actual incompatible needs or interests, issues over money, resources, or time. Belief that in order to satisfy one's own needs, those of the, their opponent must be sacrificed. Next, five approaches to managing conflict. Choose to be as assertive and get the most for oneself. Choose to be cooperative and concerned with others' feelings. These are very good bullet points. Um, you need to be assertive when you state your points of view and you don't need to go under the carpet or say, well, I can't say anything because they may not like my comments. No, say what you think would benefit the group. Now, choose to be cooperative. If everybody else says, no, we don't like that idea, but we like this other idea, then that's where you need to be cooperative and go along with everybody else. More specifically, conflict can be managed through avoidance, accommodation, confrontation, compromise, and collaboration. Next slide. Uh, this is, I'm gonna take it this from here. Now. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, Thank we you. Talked, we talked about um, a lot about conflict and it sounds uh, very complicated, but there are lots of things that you can do uh, to help yourself manage through conflict, both in the workplace and in your relationships. So I'm going to start <clears throat> by saying some of the ways that we use with, uh, we work with conflict, and you're going to see examples of this in, in each of the ones that I talk about. The first one is avoidance. You simply ignore the issue and hope that it goes away. You deny that it exists. You avoid people you disagree with. You, you see them in the hallway and you run the other way. You don't want them to be in part of your team at work and you don't wanna even see them in the parking lot. That is a, I lose and you lose. So denial that a problem exists simply does not work. The second part of this uh, method to look into uh, managing conflict and, and trying to resolve it is you just give up your own position and you're just agreeable. Yes, whatever you say, sure, no problem. Yep, that's okay. You're sacrificing your own views to maintain a relationship and that's not healthy either. This may be considered cooperative, but honestly, there's a cost. And I will tell you the cost, the cost is one's mental, emotional, and sometimes physical health because you have basically surrendered 
your own values, your own opinions, your own ideas, which may be very beneficial to the workplace. In other words, I lose, okay, you win. So you're accommodating that. That's not healthy. That's not what we're suggesting. The next time we look at a conflict, another type is, and this is what you'll see when you are out driving with road rage, with people, um, the latest is throwing cell phones and drinks onto a stage when someone's performing, uh, getting in a fight at a bar, having mass um, crowds. And in the workplace, it's having arguments where everybody can hear you and not necessarily fist fights, but acting aggressively, com confronting and competition. And that means I'm gonna keep battling until I win at all costs. Well, you might win, but everybody else loses. The next one is compromise. Balancing the goals of each participant and everybody's going to give in a little. This is what we hope Congress does at some point in the future. And instead of getting worse, it seems like it's getting worse instead of getting better, but I'm old enough to know a time when Congress worked together, everyone gave in a little, laws were passed, and there was um, opportunity to make the world a little bit better, at least the United States a little bit better, because everybody gave in a little, everybody compromised. No party gets complete satisfaction, but that's what compromise is. So don't expect to get everything you're asking for, but you do win some, uh, and they win some, the other side wins some. And that's, that's good. Now, here's the best. The next one is called collaboration. This is where you search for a win-win solution that satisfies everyone. Stephen Covey wrote a book called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And what he said is one of those habits is seek to understand and be understood. Try to win both sides. Both sides should win. So clarify differences rather than accommodating points of view. Talk about it, identify what the problems are, look at ways to provide solutions to those problems and maintain cooperation and respect for the other's position. This is an I win and you win situation. Now, how do we do all these? Now that we know what causes it, what it is, the different types, uh, the most important part, I think, of this program is simply to uh, manage conflict. Remember, you might not resolve it. From the first or second slide, you talked about uh, resolving versus management. You might never resolve conflict. You might still have the conflict, and one person goes on to another job, you go on to another job, you may never see each other again. But for the time being working together, you have some some strategies to manage this conflict. And this is what we're gonna talk about next. The first one is, as I kind of briefly mentioned, do an assessment. Ass this, side, this next slide will talk about the assessment of conflict and how you go about it. The first thing to do is calm down. Our emotions take over with road rage, with arguing, arguing with neighbors, battling neighbors. Uh, allow yourself time to calm down and evaluate the situation. Find a neutral, safe environment. And that's usually not one person's office or the other person's office. And I'm talking now uh, uh, work-related uh, for honest communication. Find the library, find a uh, place where you can go outside and have lunch for a little while. Find the neutral, safe environment and agree, have ground rules for honest communication. Identify the source of the conflict. Both parties really need to agree on the source of this problem. Because as we talked about earlier, some people with miscommunication really don't know what the conflict is and they think it's one thing, it's really another. This allows all the parties to see how the conflict came to be or came to grow. So who are the parties in the conflict? Is it just the two of you? Or is it a group or a team of people 
that is in conflict with another team of people? What is their relationship with each other? I will tell you from 40 plus years in the workplace, you're not gonna like everybody you work with. And here's something else that's important. Everybody you work with, not everybody's gonna like you. So you have these conflicts all the time and you have to figure out the relationship with each other. And is this an honest person who can communicate well? Assess the points that you're willing or unwilling to compromise on. And this is basically how laws in Congress are put together. People are willing and unwilling to compromise. You have to find areas where you're willing to compromise. What will you do to give in a little bit to create a win-win? So what does the other party want? And make sure you're clear about it because communication and miscommunication are the biggest problems, in my opinion, in the workplace. Determine the appropriate conflict handling behavior for the situation, the relationships that you're in, as well as the environment. And the next slide talks about something that is a relatively new concept and, and it's so very important. It's not just your re regular intelligence, your intellectual intelligence, you, but your emotional intelligence is something you have to be aware of. How are your emotions and actions impacting other people? And be transparent about that. Be honest with yourself. If you're acting like a jerk, then acknowledge that. And if you think they're acting like a jerk in a nice way, say, it's hard for me to work with you when you say things like, and then fill in the blank. Emotional intelligence is simply reading your audience, knowing how you act, knowing how they act, and how can you use your intelligence by uh, working together. And emotional intelligence, some characteristics of that are compassion, empathy, looking for the win-win, trying to find a solution, uh, compromise, 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 without compromising your values and describe the conflict from your perspective. Use I messages. I'm upset because, and then you fill in that uh, rest of the sentence. Consider conflict from the other person's viewpoint. Listen to them. One of the seven uh, habits, seek to understand and to be understood. It was a wonderful book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Stephen Covey. Uh, listen to their concerns. They have a right to be at that meeting and they should have a right to express their concerns. So understand their viewpoint, his or her viewpoint. And the next slide is attitude. Okay, here's where we really get into it because uh, consider the other person's attitude and behavior, but also your own. So road rage, think about that person's behavior. It's frightening. It's actually frightening. Um, think about your attitude. Are you coming across as a jerk? Are you coming across as a know-it-all? You have to go through these exercises if you're going to resolve or manage, and you might have more chance at managing conflict rather than resolving, but manage it. You have to. Were you reasonable? Reasonable. Was the other person, person acting reasonably? Avoid stereotyping. This is important too. And making predeterminations based on ethnic um, ethnicity or age. Don't stereotype a baby boomer or an older worker in one way or a young person, a Generation X, in another way. Once you do that prejudging, then you put yourself at a disadvantage for making any headway in terms of managing conflict. Remain objective. This is not about your emotions or poor me. This is about managing the conflict and moving on and working in an environment where you may frankly not like that person. And I've been working in many environments. I always prided myself in a way to have people that I really didn't care for, but was a, I was able to work with them and they never knew, or at least never never said anything or let me, look, let me uh, assume, that, that I didn't care for them. I've worked with people who did not care for me and um, we worked together somehow. Re remain as flexible and open as possible and always, always try to maintain a positive approach. It doesn't hurt. 
And, you know, we talk about people who go to work and you're interviewing for your next job every day you go to work. I don't think people all realize that, but it's true. And you might be uh, pinpointed for a job uh, promotion, another job that might be um, easier, more fun, more suited to your abilities, but you've got to stay positive. You've got to go to work, stay positive and try very hard to manage this behavior. The next is action. Okay, watch your use of language. And again, the road rage is a whole other story. There's a whole set of language that's involved there, but watch your use of language. Do not swear, do not use bad language. Do not call them something, call them a name. Watch your own use of nonverbal communications. You may or may not know this, but 70% of communication is nonverbal. If you have somebody who's crossing their hands, uh, their arms across their chest and sitting back in their chair, um, that's nonverbal communication Like that says, I'm not liking this. This isn't going very well. Stick to the issue. Separate the people from the problem. And that's kind of along the idea of... Um, uh, verbal versus nonverbal. Separate the people from the problem. What is the problem? Get your emotions out of it. Don't make promises you can't keep. Don't present an issue in a win-lose context because that's not going to go well. Compromise when possible, but don't sidestep the issues. Don't get so uncomfortable in this, this uh, meeting that you just uh, go to the easy stuff and figure the easy stuff out and there's still that stuff out there that is not being addressed at all. And be sincere and trustworthy. Again, your actions at work speak volumes, both verbal and nonverbal, and you are also interviewing for your next job every time you're there. So actions, avoid statements starting with you. That's something else that I see a lot. And uh, you weren't able to come on to work on time for the last whatever, or you didn't fix the problem when it came up. This puts the people on the defensive every time, and it never it never ends well. So avoid you statements and really try not to personalize it. As far as analysis on the next slide, we have. Um, conflict successfully resolved or not, uh, if it isn't successfully resolved, it will resurface, as I mentioned before. What was the outcome? Write it down. Take minutes. Make sure they agree to all the outcomes. Write them down. Have bullet points. Share with them. Somebody take minutes. Maybe a neutral person takes minutes. Decide on these preventative strategies for the future so this doesn't bubble up again. And if not satisfied, what steps might have been taken for a different solution? So you may not have solved it. Remember, it may not be resolved. You may have managed it for the short term. And conflict management skills, boy, these are hard to do. These are really hard to do. You'll need to adopt these, though, if you want to work effectively in the workplace. I've had 15 years of management in my work. and. Um, you kind of, and I wish I would have had some classes like this, frankly, but you try to adopt these skills as you go. Active listening, emotional intelligence, caring, compassion, compromise, as I mentioned, patience to a point where your stomach hurts sometimes, impartiality, in other words, don't be partial to one, one um, person if you're a manager versus another. Uh, try to be positive, try to keep open communication. And I, uh, I ask you and challenge you to measure your own conflict management skills. You've all been in conflict. I know you have. You can't, you can't move through the life that we're living here with, uh, without some conflict sometime, either at the grocery store or the um, retail or a mall or road rage or whatever. So common interview or common conflict interview questions, you will find these. This is one to uh, take a picture with your iPhone if you want to, because these are common conflict interview questions. What the manager or um, supervisor is looking for is how do you act in a team environment when you're working with other people? What about a project where you had to work with someone difficult? How did that go? How did you resolve it? 
And um, give an example of a time you had to respond to an unhappy manager, customer, or colleague. Um, do you blame it on them? Do you say, not my job, not my problem? Or do you look to see if you can manage the conflict? It goes a long way if you're interviewing for a job. And you might have a time when you disagreed with a rule or approach. Uh, what you don't do is just not follow it. You talk about ways that you can change it or maybe a different approach would work. Describe a situation where you disagreed with a supervisor and how did that go? And did you manage through that? And this, this can come out the other end as a very positive thing. And tell me about a challenge you faced at work and how you dealt with it. Those are common questions uh, in the interview process. And the next one is um, a scenario where you probably have been in or at least familiar with poor communication resulting in a mistake. That happens, that's what you have to work with and uh, the next scenario is a uh, structural conflict. Hilda talked about the different types of conflict. Here's a structural conflict due to a lack of meeting space. Several teams had to share one room, each believing their own team deserves more time because their job, of course, is more important. And um, I cannot tell you the number of conflicts I have witnessed over my years of space issues meeting rooms, office space, whose office has got a window, which one is closest to the boss. These are all structural conflicts and um, beware of them. And in this particular one, uh, you, have, you have to just go along with whatever the team decides. Uh, and you know what, an office is an office and uh, more important to get the job done and the productivity done. So those are some ideas and um, then and we wanna ask if you have any questions, feel free. Uh, you can ask now in person or through the chat and Hilda and I will be happy to answer them as best we can.